Okay, so when you're looking at a problem, and this is the second part of the 3.6, when you're looking at a problem like this, if you notice all of these things that they're asking us to find, this is the same stuff we'd already been doing, right? So turn in your notes back until you see this page. We did number one on Friday, now we're doing this one. Okay, so we already know how to do all this if we're given a function of f of x, right? You take the derivative, you set the derivative equal to zero, yada, yada, yada. All right, this is a little bit different, not because of what they ask you, but because of what they give you, okay? This says the graph of f prime is sketched below. I want you to write a big f prime. This is not the graph of f. If this was the graph of f, then all of these questions I'm asking you are super easy. This is not the graph of f. This is the graph of f prime. Do you think there are points or arrows at the end? Look at what it says. The domain is the set of all real numbers. So is it going to stop or keep going? Keep going, therefore arrows. That's how you know. If it had, if I wanted you to have points here, what would I have set up here? I would have said something about a closed interval or endpoints or the domain is brackets, something like that. Okay, this says justify all your answers in terms of f prime. Now remember, this is the graph of f prime. So when I say over what interval is f of x decreasing, you cannot just say, oh, this is decreasing right here. No, that's where this graph is decreasing. I want to know where f is decreasing. There's a really easy way, though, to make this like, make perfect sense, and that is to start with your justification. We'll write our answer over here, and then we'll say, because f prime what? Is less than zero or is negative. This is the same thing we did before. This is nothing new. You know this justification. f decreases when f prime is negative, when its slope is negative. <coughs> So since this is the graph of f prime, I want to know where is f prime negative. I'm just going to look right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and color this right here, but I'm going to erase that in a minute, okay? But um, this right here is where f prime, this graph, is negative. Remember, this is the graph of f prime. I'm going to say that a lot of times. So my answer would be negative 2 to 0 union 2 to 3. That's where this graph, which is f prime is negative, and that's then where f of x is decreasing. So then what about where f of x is increasing? Again, start with the justification, because f prime what? Is greater than 0 or is positive. Could you say because, because f prime is increasing? Is it the same? Is saying f prime is positive? No. Not the same. Okay, when you start saying f prime is increasing, that gets into concavity. So f prime is greater than zero. And I said I was going to erase that. There we go. Th that would be up here. That would be these things. This would be where this graph, this is the graph of f prime, it's positive. These points I've highlighted in red is where f prime is positive. So we would want to start this then at negative infinity. And we'd want to stop it at negative two. <laughs> Union, 0 to 2. Union, I'm going to have to erase this and rewrite because I didn't leave myself enough room. Union, 3, 2, infinity. Rewrite the justification because f prime is greater than 0. Of course, you could say f prime is positive. And I'm going to erase this so it doesn't confuse me later. Okay? I still kind of like this better than the old stuff because you don't have to do a lot of calculations. You do have to interpret them. <coughs> okay, over what interval is the graph of f of x concave down? All right, I'm going to switch colors for this. So what do we know about f being concave down? Like, what's our main justification? Because f double prime is less than zero. That is 100% accurate. Does it help me with this? Well, it's a stepping stone. This is not the gr graph of f double prime. If it were, then that would have been easy. So how can I now relate this back to f prime? What is f prime doing? Decreasing. Decreasing. 
This is when you say F prime is decreasing or increasing, when you're talking about concavity. Okay? Think of it this way, if you're like, oh, I'm not really sure how she made that leap. Think of it this way. You guys are good when I say a function's decreasing when its derivative is negative. Again, F prime decreases when its derivative, which is F double prime, is negative. It's the same relationship. So we got to think, okay, well, where is F prime decreasing? So this is when we get to look at that. It would go all the way down there. And then again, here to here. So we would write that out as negative infinity to negative 1, and then union 1 to 3. This does not ask me about concave up, but do you think you could figure that out? What would be your justification? F double prime is positive, greater than 0, and F prime is increasing. Okay. So now we get to at what value of x does f of x have a relative max? You're going to want to say 1 because that's where this thing has a max. But I want to know not where f prime has a max, but where does f have a max? So again, we start with our justification. So what was our justification before this for a maximum? Zero is zero. a good start, but we need to have an actual change in sign. So, and we need to be specific because maximum and minimum are two different types of change. So we're changing from what to what? For maximum. Positive. Positive to negative. However you need to remember that. You need to know that. Okay? So that's our justification. Always has been for relative max. Okay, so, so it, <coughs> it, is, when it, it is hitting zero, but it also has to change. Yes, yeah. correct. And it's a way to distinguish between max and min. So F prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, this kind of goes back to what we did on part A and part B. This is the graph of F prime. So I'm going to give you one of the answers. Right here, F prime is negative, and then it changes, or part, sorry, F prime is positive, it changes to negative. Okay? So F prime right at negative 2, F prime is 0. That's one of my answers negative 2. And I'm using the curly braces here because my answer isn't going to be an interval. It's going to be actual x values, like that one value. Do you see another place where as you go from left to right, f prime changes positive to negative? Two. At 2, same thing. you got to make sure you're going left to right. So 2 is the other answer, and there we go. I want you to do E on your own. On like the test or quiz or whatever, are we allowed to draw like the F graph and the F double prime graph? You can do whatever you want on the picture that will help you. Okay. We are going to draw the graph of F here in a minute, and we're going to confirm all of our answers. You may find that gra graphing is easier and then finding the information. Yeah. That's totally fine. All right, what do we got? What's one of them? Zero. Zero. And the other one? Zero. Three. So let's make sure everybody understands how you guys got that. So at zero, F prime, which is what this graph is, changes from negative to positive. And we got to write that. Changes negative to positive. And then that happens again at three. Okay. The confusing thing about this is that this is the graph of F prime. So if some of you were thinking, man, I thought there was a minimum at negative 1, what you're doing is finding the minimum of this graph. Okay? We don't want to find the minimum of this graph. That would be too easy at this point. All right? We want to find the minimum of F given the graph of F prime. It's still not something that has to be hard, but you have to make sure you understand I'm not going to ask you about this graph. I'm going to give you the graph of F prime, and I'm going to ask you about the graph of F. It's a little bit harder. I agree. Okay, what about a point of inflection? So in general, just remind me, what does a point of inflection mean? Uh, just 
where F changes concavity, where F double prime changes what? Sines. Okay, so let's write that. F double prime, a lot of you are saying good things, so I'm just going to... F double prime changes sines because F changes concavity. What is F prime changing? Or what does F prime have? Think back to when we did a con so I switched to blue again just to kind of highlight this. Yeah, what type of extrema? Well, sorry, that was relative extrema. It could be a min or a max. Think of it this way. Let me erase all this green right here. Okay, so remember when we did concave down, I said the graph is concave down here in here. So at these points that I'm going to make really big in blue, those are the points. Um, and you know what? I kind of messed up here. Any of you wondering about that? I've done this problem all day today. This is, should not be a three. What should it be? 2.5. How many of you were like, Miss Brooks? Okay. But you don't want to say because you're not really sure. If you're wrong, okay, it's okay. Don't ever worry about that. That should be 2.5 right there because that's when this graph stops decreasing. So if you notice, it's these little maxes and mins of F prime. F prime has a relative extrema. That's when F has a point of inflection. This was that whole thing we talked about on that fill in the blank day. Remember when we did all those fill in the blanks? This was what I wanted you to get. F has a point of inflection when F double prime changes signs and F prime has a relative max or min. Okay? And so what are those points? Right. And 2.5, if you're like, how do we know it's exactly 2.5? We don't. That's our best guess because we just got to go with the information that we're given. Okay? It's almost always more clear than this. This is the only point that's not super clear. All right, so this is what we're going to do now. We're going to graph, and here I'm going to give you some suggestions. All right, so this is what I'm going to suggest. Okay, first of all, let's write down the information that we have, okay? And I'm going to cheat off of a piece of paper here. <clears throat> so in other words, I'm going to start back at A. From negative 2 to 0, what do we know about this graph? Like, go back, what is, what's happening? f of x is, I'll give you this one. Some of you might be thinking, I'm thinking of something more complicated. Decreasing. So I'm going to write myself all these little notes here before I do the graph. This graph is going to be harder than the one we did on Friday. Where else is this graph decreasing? From 2 to 3. So you can write the word, you can draw the symbol, you can do both. This is just designed to help you. And I'm telling you, I do this when I make my keys. Very few people have the brain it takes just to say, well, it looks like that. Okay, I don't have that brain. You might, though. I don't know. Okay, so that, and then if I look at part B, or if I just kind of infer, then that means increasing should be everywhere else. So as I make my graph, then I know that it should follow this trip. Okay, let's also do the same thing for concavity. So we know the graph is concave down, the graph of F, from negative infinity to negative 1. So the reason this is, if you hadn't picked up on this, this is harder than the one on Friday because on Friday we had intervals where we, it was just one interval and we did concave up, concave down, increasing, decreasing. The, this is all sorts of overlapping and all weird, weirdness, okay? Um, but we can do it. Alright, so this is also concave down. I'm just basically taking the information that I already wrote down and I'm kind of writing it on the graph. You may find that you don't need to do it. That's possible. It's more likely that this is really going to help you. So this is up here and this would be up as well. That wasn't one of our questions, but we can infer that the graph is not concave down, that it has to be concave up. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the point that they give us. So they tell us, like right there, 
that negative 3, 1 is a point. That's just a starting place. And then they say something about a possible graph. What this means is there's a lot we still don't know about this graph, but I can sketch it at least somewhat. Ours may not look the exact same, but it should have all this information in common. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. Let's figure out what's happening to the left, okay? Or let's see what's happening as we approach the number. So I know the graph should be increasing concave down. So this is where having a pencil is really nice because you can draw real lightly with your pencil and then kind of go from there. So look what I'm doing here. It's going to be increasing and it's going to be concave down, right? And then what did I find out earlier should happen at x equals 2? We should have a relative what? A max, and that makes sense here. Let's say you got max and min mixed up. This is a way you can check that work. So there are a lot of chances for mistakes, but here's a way you can check that mistake. Okay, now we're decreasing, still concave down, until you get to negative 1. <coughs> now at this place, I don't know. Is this point too low? Is it too high? This is where you get the possible sketch. I'm really not sure where this point, how high or how low it should be. But I do know that concave down, it should be concave down approaching the point, and as I continue to decrease, it should be concave up after the point. And then I also know that I should have a relative min at x equals 0. That was given as well. And then increasing, still concave up and increasing. At x equals 1, we have another point of inflection. So still increasing, but I change the concavity. Right? Relative max at x equals 2. See if you can finish out this graph. And you may find something that works better for you than this. And again, some people are just really good at this. I'm not that person. Okay, so here's my graph of f of x. Basically, you just take all the information and you put it together. All right, does it make sense that because the f of the x graph up here, or the f prime x graph was curvy, does it make sense that my new graph is curvy? Does it make sense? Yeah, it should be curvy. Do you guys remember the rule about the number of curves? So the derivative should have one less curve than the original. So look at this f of x. We have one, two, three, four curves. How many curves did f prime have? Three. So that's it. We follow those same rules. Now, when you get some of those tangents and double roots, that can throw that stuff off. Um, but for the most part, it works like this. Um, here's what I want to do now. We're done with the problem, but I just want to check it. So I just want y'all to watch me. Okay, this is the last thing we're going to do today. So I want you to stay with me. Don't fall asleep, Karen. Okay, those eyes look we're awfully, almost, like 99% closed. I just want y'all to see this because do you think there's a lot of chances to make a mistake? Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And I make mistakes when I do these. So we know way back in Chapter 2, how to go from a graph from f to f prime. We learned this before we even learned how to do a derivative. And all we knew about derivative was slope. This was the only thing we knew. And so, so just kind of rewind back in your mind all the way back to like September, mid-September maybe, all right? All you knew was that, hey, at these points, the slope is zero, right? 
And so we plotted those points. That's how we started. And you also knew, okay, the slope here, positive, right? So I go above. From this max to this min, the slope was negative. So I got to connect these two, and you connect them by going below. This is how we did this. This is how we went from the graph. Sorry, that should say chapter two. In chapter two, the graph of f to the f prime. From here to here, positive. From here to here, negative, positive. And that right there is the graph of f prime of x. You don't have to write this on your notes, but what I want you to tell me is, does this green graph look at all like the graph that was given? Yes. That's a way you can check your work. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should have the same trends. It should definitely be crossing the x-axis at the same points. That's how you know you can that you did this right. That's what I was just doing that. Yes. There are definitely people who are able to do this backwards. And that is good. I would tell you most students can't do that. Not at all. See, they I can't do it consistently. I get really confused when I'm looking at like F prime and have to like say that because blah blah blah. Because you're focused on what that graph is doing. So like I just have to draw everything. Yeah. Um 